Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Government Secrets. Episode we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you come to us for the professionalism is what you do. We That's, know it. We know it and you know it. We're big TV guys, so we have special graphics and a whole production staff around us. We're not in our respective apartments just barking into cameras like lunatics. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is what we do. Uh, so let's, let's start off with the, uh, the kind of hidden side of the topical news. Donald Trump has the COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we all we all know that. So, what are the the government secret sides of Donald Trump having COVID nineteen? Mm -hmm. Now, one of them is that yes, he's lying in various ways. At first, they were lying about whether he got oxygen or not, and then they're lying about whether he's doing great or you know all this shit. So they're lying in multiple ways, and that is nothing new in American history. Presidents have often lied about how healthy they are, how mentally healthy what? they are. I uh, thought yeah. FDR just always liked yeah. sitting. I didn't think they were covering up his <laughs> <Yeah>. polio. <laughs> I thought he just really liked to blanket on his knees because oh. he has cold knees. Cold people knees. have people have cold knees, you know. <laughs> Especially present. They have yeah. the coldest knees. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you got, knees, but they're all going to be sitting. In this photo yeah, yeah. with FDR, they're always sitting. Everyone's always sitting. Anyway, so yeah, so the. The COVID you, got FD, you got FDR. You also have uh, Woodrow Wel Wilson. Apparently, had a stroke or multiple strokes or something. Uh, he was out of it. Um, and then, uh, of course, Reagan. You know, vicious Alzheimer's for the last whatever four years. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm allergic to bullshit. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Reagan. Reagan was like the most recent one, I guess, in our lifetimes. Is it was so clear he was having cognitive decline, and they knew he had Alzheimer's, and they covered it up, which is a a crime. I mean, it's a constitutional crisis. If you see that the president of the United States is not mentally is having Alzheimer's, you immediately swear in the vice president. That's what should have happened. That's not what happened. Um, right. I mean, right. they help the former head of the CIA, George. Herbert Walker Bush get elected anyway. <laughs> but anyway, that's a whole other government secret. So, um, and, and, uh, George, the, the younger George Bush had a brain eating amoeba and they left him in office. So yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of lying about the presidency and health issues. Um, and then I wanted to, to get into kind of, because we've also talked about like government secrets in terms of, uh, kind of the myth of America that has to be sold to us. And with this COVID-19, with Trump having COVID-19, one of the things that at least some people are talking about is the, the incredible inequality of his treatment, uh, not just because he's president, just, but just being rich. Um, he's, he's, got, he's on all kinds. He's on remdesivir and, and antibodies and uh, some sort of steroid. And, and, you know, he's getting experimental treatments and all this crazy shit, not to mention being helicoptered to a hospital that was only 20 minutes away from him. Him. Um, but so he's getting all kinds of crazy, you know, shit to make sure he does well during this. And most Americans will not get anything near that, that treatment. And if things start to go south, they will just be basically allowed to die uh, rather than even get close to the treatment he's getting. Um, and so I, I think that this speaks to this kind of American myth that we don't have inequality, that we don't have this massive inequality. That It's not just about being the president. It's about uh, being incredibly rich and getting that kind of treatment, uh, which would go for any CEO or, you know, any type, any, any of the oligarchs would get something similar. But it's not just in medicine. It's within most of our lives, uh, the the inequality changes the experience and the ability that we have to achieve or to succeed or to be uh, safe and secure. And the you know one of the biggest kind of government secrets or American myths is that we have equality of opportunity. You know, if you just work hard enough, then you can get there. Yes. But of of course, it's like good luck being, you know, people say with homeless people, why don't they, why don't they just go interview for a job? Do you, do you think they can get a suit just laying in an alley somewhere? There's going to be a clean suit and a resume and, uh, you know, like people to give recommendations. Being homeless, being homeless and getting a job is incredibly difficult. 
Uh, it's it's tough, and it's you know, and and you too, Lee. If your dad gives you a million dollars as a kid, you too can grow up to bankrupt at least six companies and still be president. That's what that's the American yeah. dream. Or, you know, you can have a Ivy League education like plenty of our other presidents have had because they are in some crazy secret hake secret handshake club. So it's a, well, really anybody and, can and do this. And speaking of the edu well, speaking of the education, Trump and Bush, at, at least, it's very clear that they're getting into these colleges. You know, Trump was in an elite business school, and uh, Bush was at Yale. It's like getting into these colleges was because of their f fucking fathers and connections and shit. Like Trump, they they're almost certain had paid a kid to take his entrance tests. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, only when you're rich can you get that kind of treatment to get into these schools, even when you're a dum dumb. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, George W. Bush was a C student and he got into Yale because his old man donated a lot of money. Like it's in his dad's like it's so there's that, but I want to get back to the COVID secret because it seems very obvious to me that if Trump comes out that, because he's in his seventies, he's overweight, he's not healthy. Are there people in those categories that have gotten COVID and survived it? Yeah, but it's highly unlikely. Now, granted, he is getting all of these treatments. So to me, if he comes out of this like, I'm good, it's a, it's, it's a scam for two reasons. One, he's, I don't want to go through the debates again because he came off really bad in the last debate. His numbers went down after that last debate, even though Joe Biden is a train wreck as well. Um, and then he can say, see, COVID's not that big of a deal. I out-trumped it. You know, my MAGA hat beat it. I made America great again by beating COVID. Well, he's, and he's already trying to pull that because his tweet today was like, uh, don't let, you know, I'm doing great. I feel 20 years younger. Don't let COVID dominate your life or something. And it's like, dude, you're getting a version of treatment that almost no one gets. Nobody gets. So it's like, but... So, and and then maybe it's fake so he can just say, oh, you know, and then, then uh, oh, we should be pushing through all of these treatments or whatever is what what he'll say. Or I, I, I know people have the, the theories on like, oh, well, it, you know, it, it's it's fake because, oh, he, he wanted to get out of the debates or whatever. But here's the thing is like, if you understand, you know, I come from a psychology family and I also studied psychology. It's like, if you understand anything about the psychology of Trump, his ego is front and center on everything. Right. And his ego would never allow him to claim he got COVID-19. The only way this comes out is if it's true, because he would, I mean, he had to look like, a, in his view, I'm not saying this is true of sick people, but in his view, he had to look like a weenie. He had to right. get on a helicopter in a mask and go have doctors take care of him and, you know, couldn't be out in public and, and have the doctors come out and say right. that he had a fever and he had to take oxygen and all this stuff. And this is absolutely the opposite of everything that is Trump. Yeah, that's true. And I think what's also going to happen is they always say uh, it's right around day nine is when day 10 is when this really gets bad when you have COVID, if the symptoms do get worse. So I think, and more than likely, the most, this, like the Occam's razor, the simplest answer is probably the one. He, he was walking, he was meeting with people without masks. They were, you know, like he wasn't taking yeah. it seriously. And this is what happens. And so, um, yeah. You know, it'll be curious to see what happens with all this special treatment that he's getting. And some people are like, well, he's the president. Of course, the president should get some special treatment, but not at the expense of we, we you know, I, our I health mean, system is so bad. I, here, uh, yeah. Here's the thing is I don't I don't mind him getting special treatment in the sense. I mean, I, you know, I think the guy's a fucking awful con man murderer. So there is that. But I don't mind him getting special treatment in the sense that you should always, yes, try and protect the, ostensibly uh, try and protect the president or whatever. But don't act like this is normal. Right. Go, you know, walk out and have the press secretary and everything walk out and go, uh, yeah, he got a treatment that almost no one in America would get and he's doing right. great. So yeah. if we could get that for everybody, then we'd really have something going. Give that speech. But they would never give that speech. No. Not to mention, too, like all the other people in the White House that he had, had maybe have contracted it. He just did that drive-by yesterday with the Secret Service guys. Yeah, they had masks on. But would you want to be in a car with somebody with COVID? No. Even if you had a mask insane. on? 
It's so insane. like if these secret service guys start getting it, what's going to happen? You know, like it, it's really, uh, and, and all the people at his rallies that don't wear masks that take pride in not wearing his mask. I mean, every single virus that has been bad, swine, mm -hmm. Spanish flu, uh, you know, whatever the plague, it was the second round, right? It was the second round. So, um, we're, we're, we haven't had, the second round of it yet it's going to happen in the next couple months over the winter and it's going to it's going to be even worse and so all these people who are like ah, i don't need masks or whatever it's going to be so even if he does come out of this okay it's still going to be bad and there's nothing he's going to be able to do to stop it you know because we, we this country is a banana republic that's a failed state that is not handled it correctly so right. i mean and, and, well and another you know it's like even countries that have handled it better are still go, uh, have, still have a fair number of economic ramifications. I mean, there are right. some exceptions uh, where like Denmark, they're paying companies to keep everyone employed. So there are some exceptions. But uh, in terms of the economic fallout, it's like here's another secret of our government, of our American system, is that. Well, you shut down the country because of a pandemic. Let, let's say it wasn't COVID-19, whatever, any pandemic. Uh, and everyone just, all the businesses go bankrupt and everyone loses their jobs. And that's just how it works. It's like, no, you could have an economic system that did not work that way. Where it wasn't like, hey, we as a country need to shut down because it's for the safety of everyone. And guess what? All the corporations are going to be fine. I mean, co companies, the smaller companies, all of them are going to be fine. No one's going bankrupt. All those people you hired, they're all going to be have their jobs back. And we're going to make sure that happens. Like that system could exist. We choose not to let it exist. We choose to make it so that you close your doors and everything collapses because we have a, a, a system, economic system that requires infinite consumption, just like, like some sort of beast that has to keep eating or it dies immediately. So that's the big secret that can't be discussed on our media. And then what that does too is that obviously forces people into this desperation of we're opening up no matter what these certain governors or whatever we're opening up and i'm not wearing masks it's all a bunch of hooey and it's like you're, you're forcing people to work in in unsafe situations and yeah and people are like i don't care it's not that big of a deal and it's like oh boy there's all these people during the spanish flu that didn't wear masks and they died <laughs> so it's it's ugh. It's such a broken system, like this but, whole well, thing. Well, and, and what you're speaking to is actually, even when there is no pandemic, this is a certain number of people are just thrown into the yeah. the machine to die like uh, like cannon fodder. Uh, you know, the, the life expectancy of poor people is, you know, 20 years or more or less than rich people or even middle class people. And that's just, we just act like, oh, that's normal. You know, poor people die a lot. Uh, <laughs> like, that's just fine. It's like, no, it's not fine. It's incredibly unethical. It's incredibly revolting that we should have a system like that when we are one of the richest countries in the world, when we could uh, supply for everybody so that they are not dying younger and everything, so that people don't work in mines and die at 43 from black lung. Like, we have the ability to have a system that does not just churn out you know, people and just destroy them and their lives and, and, and everything. But, you know, we, we're just like, Oh yeah, it's just a cost of doing business. Yeah. So what 30 to, you know, 30,000 people die every year because they don't have health care. Hmm. Guess they should have got better jobs. So what if there's a half a million people living on the streets? Yeah. You know, like we just don't care about any of it. It's, it's insane. And yet, you know, uh, but we're going to have a prayer sit down, whatever they had to some mass prayer thing for, for Trump. I'm just like, all right, dude, are you, are you having a mass prayer thing for everybody in Yemen or did you just not, you didn't get around to that one? No, just, like, just for Trump. Just, just, for just, Trump. Got, just got to help out the, uh, the, the, the uh, obese, megalomaniacal, narcissistic man child. We got to make sure he pulls through or yeah. else all is lost. I mean, th this really showed the liberal media for what they are, the, the, the MSNBCs and the CNNs. Oh, so you're telling us, let's see, he's a dictator. He's destroying America. He's a Russian agent. I think he's a, what, a Turkish agent as well. Right. He's a, he's a North Korean agent. Uh, but also, 
pray for him to be healthy because we need to love our president. That was, I don't know, I was like, is Rachel Maddow being sarcastic or is she just like, boy, there goes my ratings gravy train. Um, I don't she want was being, to- That was not a sarcastic tweet. She was being serious because MSNBC, because I watched some of the other anchors, they were clearly a memo went out that they needed to act like they gave a shit about the presidency. Yeah, it's funny. I think she was too busy uh, Russia gating some crazy paranoid segment that was sponsored by Boeing when Bernie had his heart attack. So I didn't see anything like that when Bernie had his heart attack, <laughs> um, which is just like, I mean, some people are like, I don't want anyone, I don't want to wish anybody to die. And I'm like, okay. So if Hitler and Himmler and Eichmann and Goebbels all uh, got polio in 1936 because they didn't wear masks, <laughs> how would we feel? Bummed out, thoughts and prayers, God bless them. <laughs> what would be said? Lots of, uh, lots of thoughts and prayers, yeah. Actually, okay. actually it, was th- it was American thoughts and prayers that got Hitler through some uh, vicious gonorrhea in 1941. Yeah. Because <laughs> <American, 'cause> nothing, <laughs> is, nothing is more potent than American thoughts and prayers. That no. Was, no. 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 That shit's pure, uncut thoughts and prayers. It's, it's, it's the real shit. The real Although, unfortunately, it is cut with bleach because Trump told us to. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been drinking bleach since it started because my president said so. So I do whatever the, the leaders say because I don't question authority because I like America. Um, that's why. So when Bernie told me to vote for Biden, I said, OK, I guess I will, because uh, I'm too dumb to realize that Biden is just as much of a shit bag as Trump. Um, so, yeah, we got good leaders, I think, is what we're saying. We're excited about our leadership. And yep. let yep. me ask you this. If Trump either passes away or becomes so incapacitated that he can't be president anymore, and obviously they swear in Pence, and this happens before the election, what what hap- like what what hap- where do you my, see this going? My first question would be, how would you be able to tell Trump was mentally incapacitated? <laughs> what what would give that away? <laughs> Okay, good. Qu- wow, good. I didn't think it through. I didn't think it through. So I guess, so I guess he's like couldn't couldn't talk, or he just wasn't. He was like an he injury. couldn't. He couldn't tweet. He hadn't tweeted for three days. That would that's, be the sign. That's when we knew. That's when we knew. But like, but like if he's hooked up to a respirator, he's intubated. You know, he's in a coma or something. I mean, yeah, at that, I, I, I highly doubt that would happen, but I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what they would do, you know, because, because it's like, look, I, I am not one to defend Trump or Pence, but Pence would have a reasonable argument that he never ran for president. And then all of a sudden he's like supposed to be the presidential candidate with one week before the election. And It'd be kind of insane. But, you know, I think if Trump right now or let's say in a week says we have to put off the election because I don't feel well, uh, I think that's going to be fucking ridiculous. Which he could do. I mean, he could say I'm not well enough yet or I'm still, you know, hold, let's push back the election, which is like. Yeah, but we've had we've had elections. I mean, here's the thing is the, since the election, since 80 percent of the election is just a show anyway. <laughs> It's like we've been able to have elections in some pretty ridiculous times. I mean, in the middle of civil war and everything else, we, we still had elections. Yeah. So then they would have an election like Biden versus Pence. I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 would that excite anyone more or less than Biden versus Trump? I can't, I can't picture anyone either being like, oh, man. Well, I mean, some Trump supporters, but, uh, you know, being like, oh, man, Pence, or being like, yes, Pence. I mean, I don't, it, it would all just, it'd be, you know, you're just deciding between this fistful of shit or this fistful of shit. <laughs> well, that's, so fistful of shit 2020 is what you're saying. That's what, you, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. This, I've been saying this whole election year is going to be the crazy. I said anything is possible. And the one wild card through all of this has been COVID. Because, I mean, even in the primaries, you're like, when everybody was trapped, Bernie had the heart attack, and he seemed to recover from that fine. But I was like looking at Bernie and Biden and Trump and, you know, even Liz Warren. I'm like, these are all people in their 70s. Yeah. This is the age group that is getting affected the most by this disease. And they're out there meeting people like, 
it, it's really like I'm shocked more of them haven't gotten it. I mean, all of them, Mitch McConnell, well, Nancy Warren's, Pelosi. Uh, Warren's brother died from it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that was one of the first kind of notable people was Elizabeth Warren's brother. Uh, but but yeah, no, I my prediction is Trump gets somewhat better. And then in the beginning of the next debate, he walks out, just immediately walks over to Biden, coughs like into his mouth. Biden gets COVID and dies on the spot. Just like just like within 12 seconds, just it's over. It's his head on the podium. <laughs> it's just boom, out. he's out. And then Trump just goes, I win. And I that's, win. Yeah. That's it. And everyone everyone accepts it. And Rachel Maddow says, God bless the democracy that we live in. <laughs> um, all right. Well, all right. That's our first government secret. What, what, one topic down. What do you got? Here's what I got. And I wanted same sort of this came out and it's it's because I wanted to find out, have there ever been other because some people are saying, you know, some Trumpers are like, they gave him COVID, they're poisoning him or whatever. And I was like, well, he's just old and reckless. Y yeah, he know. was. <laughs> it's it's not like he was walking around saying it didn't exist, shaking everyone's hands and, uh, you know, letting people cough in his face, you, you know. Not enforcing any masks at his rallies or anything. Right. It wasn't like he's done anything of like that. And it's like there's a photo of him and the woman who had it and then his whole staff all just yeah. hanging out without masks. It's, it's, it's not, not like... like it's not like he was on a closed airplane with Hope Hicks as after she already knew she was positive. <laughs> like, Which is just great. It's just great leadership. So I wanted to see, um, I wanted to see, so I found this. I want to see other presidents that have been particularly either thought to be maybe poisoned just as a government secret. And I came across this, Andrew oh Jackson's exposure to mercury and lead. <laughs> so... Government secrets, segment number two. Pew, pew, bah, 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 poison presidents. <laughs> um, um, so this is a, this is such a like. Is this going to be our first government secret that we have absolutely no real evidence of? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is. This is <laughs> Since we're really grabbing at a lot of straws with does Trump actually I, have it? Does he how, not about, how, how about this, Graham? I will tell you that Abraham Lincoln died of lead poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> Almost definitely. That is for certain. Um, so historians have suggested that Andrew Jackson, president, uh, experienced lead and mercury poisoning following his therapeutic use of calomel the curious chloride and sugar of lead, lead acetate. Well, right there, that's telling you, I would say yes, if that's what they were giving him, sugared up lead, <laughs> just like lead candies. Is that what this was? Um, to evaluate these claims, we performed direct physical measurement of two samples of his hair. Now, how did you get that? How did this, <laughs> how did this, this already, this, this website seems suspect. They, they just, they went to the drain of his shower recently. And like, luckily, no one cleaned it since he okay. was. Around. Is this like a time travels website? Yeah. Um, is this, this, this is, so they they claim that um, that mercury is suggested using cold vapor generation techniques, while lead levels were measured by using electrothermal atomic absorption spectrothermic mercury levels of six point to five point six parts per million were obtained from the eighteen fifteen and eighteen thirty nine hair specimens, respectively. Lead levels were significantly elevated in both 1815 sample uh, and the 1839 sample. The results suggest that Jackson, Jackson had mercury and lead exposure, the later compatible with symptomatic plumbism in the 1815 sample. They're just throwing out a bunch of fake words. However, <laughs> Jackson's death was possibly not due to heavy metal poisoning. Biographers have concluded that President Jackson experienced mercury and lead poisoning. Some have even suggested that heavy metal toxicity contributed to Jackson's death. His physicians piled uh, him with this calomel and sugar of lead. Again, kids, don't eat sugar-flavored lead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> prescriptions from the early 19th century. Uh, I don't know that, uh, that frosted flakes were any better for you than sugar-coated lead. <laughs> there, there's no way that <laughs> They're probably right on part. They just put a little extra vitamin C in them. Yeah. Um, 
this is the other, this is really, their, this is where they're burying the lead here. Jackson also harbored two lead bullets, a consequence of his propensity to settle disputes with guns. That's, come on. <laughs> what are we even talking about? Like, for, for, I love the I love how the, the euphemism of he had a propensity for settling things with guns. It's just Andrew Jackson, a propensity for gun settlements, and also was eating sugar flavored lead pops. Like <laughs> this is, I don't know. I don't no, know. Are they, is, is this some, are they trying to excuse his kind of like uh, genocide of the Native Americans? Is like what choice did he have? He it was the uh, lead poisoning. Yeah, we, he was he was loopy with lead. It's not his fault. Well, and probably because that article that goes nothing into his genocide of Native Americans. It's just talking about they got locks of his hair from whatever time travel machine, or I don't know. Is it was like do they keep presidential hair in jars, like at the Smithsonian or something? Like how did they get that? <laughs> <laughs> They they found a fan with her uh, scrapbook, and uh, she had some locks of his hair. Yeah, where did they get this? Like from e this eBay. Case? eBay. eBay. <laughs> yeah. Andrew hey, Jackson's hair. Somebody go buy a couple of strands of Andrew Jackson's hair. Lee and I want to do our own tests. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like what well, the, the thing is. Though, now, now this is a government secret I want to tap into because. They have, remember they did studies that came out in like the late 70s or 80s that all of the lead in the water was one of the reasons we had a really high crime, crazy crime spike in like the 60s and 70s when you had all these serial killers and ro roving murderers or whatever. And they trace a lot of it to lead in the water. And that's why they got lead out of, you know. So, and some people have even made the claim that because we have over a thousand cities that are uh, with water as contaminated as much as, as Flint, Michigan, yeah. um, that that is that along with the opioid epidemic is why we have like crazy people just like nuts. People are, it feels like people are going insane. Like they just, whatever, don't Trump never lies and the, whatever it's, it's, it's affecting everybody. So <laughs> wow. Somebody put lead in this microphone. Um, uh, so because of those studies that we, we, we know from what happened in the 70s, they traced it. Is that why Andrew Jackson did all that, write all that legislation and all that awful shit with the genocide of Native Americans because he had lead poisoning and it made him nuts? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not trying to excuse what he did or to say, well, you know, he had too many lead flakes for breakfast. That's sorry, you know, but like on a, on a somewhat serious, is that, you know, because you read historically some of these leaders and they, I mean, isn't that what got to Rome? They had lead in the water and that's what made Rome go nuts. Right. Ancient Rome also had lead poisoning because the, uh, what was it? The aqueducts had lead, lead siding or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that made Rome go bananas. So so, uh, I mean, I would love to think that America is as uh, fucked up and loopy as we are because of lead in the water. But I think it's highly likely that it's uh, more the amount of intake of American culture that is uh, <laughs> causing people to fucking lose their minds. Uh, I think you have a you have a culture and an economic system that, uh, you know, not only it necessitates and encourages endless consumption and cutthroat competition. Uh, and so, you know, your goal in life becomes to amass all of the things, all of the shiny things and uh, kill those who get in your path and uh, distrust everybody. And I think you end up in a system uh, perhaps as uh, with, with, with this is the end point with a uh, bizarre orange goon in the white house and a, uh, 900 year old uh, nominee going up against him uh, both rapists both warmongers both war criminals uh both racist both misogynist and uh everybody goes i think uh, i think we're done here uh, i think we uh think we did it so what you're saying is the toxicity in the water is america <laughs> it's just yeah. there's mean, too it, much america in the water <laughs> yeah yeah i i think so if, if anything i'd say the lead might actually be uh forcing us to be a little more moderate <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so we need more lead because yeah, to, we need more to lead balance water. out the insanity exactly. of America. Yeah, uh, the, the virus that is killing the world is America. America is the virus and it's everything. It's this toxic capitalism. It's We're just completely numb. We're, we're bombing seven countries right now. Completely, no, nobody, doesn't matter. We are uh, funneling military aid via Turkey and Israel into Azerbaijan, which is bombing Armenia right now. Like it's just, we, we, we are the problem. And uh, that's what's causing all this insanity. This is just decades, if not centuries, of all of America's crimes and misdeeds coming home to roost. Yeah, and you see the the all the media, you know, whether it's the right wing Fox News or the so called liberal other networks, uh, they're all they're, they're all worried that you know will our uh, uh, unfettered war machine continue as is if Trump gets really sick or if Trump is incapacitated? They want to make sure that it will all continue. The killing will continue. The belligerence, the endless war, the destruction of other societies, and you know. Uh, I, I watched a clip the other day, Morning Joe, MSNBC, uh, basically asking an expert, quote unquote, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen with our foreign policy? And that's code for what's, are we going to keep our mass murder machine going? Because we want to make sure we will, uh, even if Trump gets sick. And, uh, they, they, you know, they, they were reassured, don't worry, the massive uh, trillion dollar a year uh, organized human murder machine will continue fine whether Trump's in a coma or not. <laughs> yep, that's what they're asking. Is, is this is this gravy train of war going to stop for the military industrial complex who buys a lot of ad time on all of these networks? Doesn't matter, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, whatever. That's what they're worried about. Like, wh wh uh, where, because because these Rachel Maddow's and whomever, Tucker, all of them, they all make seven and eight figure salaries. So, they need that. They need that gravy train to keep going. You know, like that's why they were all had no problems getting rid of. You know, of, of excuse me, of, of preventing Medicare from all from ever even getting gaining any steam. Um, so that's that's it. Did Andrew Jackson die of uh, lead cereal? We don't know. Or was <laughs> I like it? Uh, Abraham Lincoln and JFK definitely died of lead poisoning. Definitely died of lead poisoning. We're, we're wondering about uh, Andrew Jackson. Um, let's see. I'll give you. I'll give you a little fun one that I, I I wouldn't really put under the category of government secrets, but uh, I'll government secrets bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, let's let's call it a bonus. Um, but it's it's an amazing uh, forgotten history, and also uh, I think there is there is a little bit of a of a. Some, something in there about about how our system works at the end, which I'll, I'll get to. But basically, there was, and I and I used this, to, uh, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning of this week's uh, Redacted Tonight. But in 1896, in Texas, September 15th, a man named William George Crush, who used to work with the railway, but he became a showman, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, a... Uh, a carnival barker type type person. He, uh, William George Crush, convinced officials at the Missouri Kansas Texas Railroad to let him stage a colossal train wreck in which two trains would crash dead on into each other at full speed, and it would be done for everyone around to watch. This was the show, was a literal train wreck, <laughs> and so. And they you're saying his grandson put together this last debate. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely right. They produced the debate. So, so they advertised the event for weeks. And I, I don't think anyone's surprised this happened in Texas. They advertised the event for weeks. And they even helped. They gave, because they were doing it basically in the middle of nowhere, but they named it, they gave the middle of nowhere a name like it was a town and they called it Crush. Uh, Texas after William Crush. And so they, and the, the train company helped commute the 30 to 40,000 people out to Crush, Texas to watch these two trains collide into each other. 30 to 40,000 people. 
Uh, the event was delayed for an extra hour because they had to get everyone back far enough that it was safe and people, you know, it was tough to get everyone to stand far enough back. But so then they get started and they back the trains up a mile apart and they get them going at full speed into each other. And the two trains <laughs> crash into each other in a spectacular, a spectacular explosion. And then the boilers, the two boilers on the steam locomotives. Oh, and they filled each of them with six cars filled with debris uh, with a locomotive at the front. The locomotive, the, the boilers then exploded, sending shrapnel into the audience, killing three people. Oh. And injuring like a hundred. And even the photographer of the event lost his eye. Jesus Christ. Now that's what I call a show. And that's where the USA chant started. That's <laughs> yeah, where everybody started, realized. Yeah. Imme weird. Immediately, immediately afterwards, as everyone's covered in blood, they were like, USA, USA. <laughs> we're USA. number one. This is why. <laughs> if that doesn't summarize America right there, <laughs> like somebody went, let's do this awful thing. Let's not think of the repercussions. <laughs> but hey, it'll make money. And people will go, I want to watch that. Like, if that doesn't summarize what America is, boy, you could have said, hey, we're going to spend all this money and help save this or fix that or give these people something or, nope, two trains, head to head. <laughs> like, it's so, that's how dumb America is. And America's been getting away with that level of stupidity for a long time until now. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, and th this th this is the the result. Uh, a couple of days later, is exactly as you would imagine American business to function. Uh, the following day, the railroad, which had been employing Crush uh, at, in some other capacity before he asked them if he could do this, uh, they fired him because uh, you know it was such a, a catastrophe with people dying. But the news, it like was on the cover of newspapers and things. So the news got out all over the nation and ultimately resulted in a lot of business for that railroad company. And so three days later, they rehired him. Because it was a success, basically. Again, it summarizes all of America right there. So they <laughs> let this guy do this stupid thing. When he does it, they go, oh, my God, and fire him. You let, the, you let him do this, you morons. And then they go, hey, but it made money. Well, bring back the lead moron. We're yeah. going to do more stupid crap. Like, unbelievable. <laughs> like, if that, that sums up America and all of it, that is all of America. Greed, stupidity, dangerous, bloodlust, like, just people like, oh, man, I want to go see two trains smash into each other. And then, oh, we got shrapnel in our face. Boy, you didn't. You didn't think Wait, that was they're now happen? putting it on the on the welcome signs at uh, Ellis Island. You know, welcome to America, land of the spectacular train wreck. What a spectacular train oh, wreck we are. That's what America is, a spectacular train wreck. But at least it made money like that. That's the logic of all of it. It, hey, it makes money. Like we have people dying in this. But hey, we make money. Like that's with anything. Like, well, we got to end these wars. But well, who's, what about people going to lose their jobs in the war machine? Like when Wolf Blitzer said that, if we end war, there's people get are going to lose jobs. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're so it, insane. Oh, yeah. Wolf Blitzer did say, what about all the jobs that we'll lose uh, if if we are not at war or whatever? Um, and uh, that call that leaked from, I believe it was Lockheed Martin, Marilyn Houston, the CEO, talking to investors, the top investors or whatever, on their kind of private uh, investor calls. She was talking about how like, oh, there's, there's a real growth market around Iran, you know, basically saying that we're going to sell all these weapons to countries near Iran because we're building them up as such a threat uh, that these countries will want more weapons. It is such a form of insanity. And when you try to explain it, most people don't want to hear it or don't get it or... They'll say, yeah, war is bad, but then they're still going to tell you that they like Biden or Trump. And they think those those two, either one of those parties, 
is going to change. And I'm like, no, both of these parties have been part of this war machine. They've been profiting from it. We've been at war in Afghanistan for 19 years. Like, yep. this is, this is like, it, it summarizes how, how dumb America is. Like, it's just about profit and doesn't care if we blow it up. As long even, as it makes- Even in this ridiculous week, these past couple of weeks, even as a pandemic is raging across the country, the economy is collapsing, 100 million evictions are upcoming, uh, Trump get, you know, getting COVID, the fucking insane debate, all that shit, uh, the Supreme Court chaos, Biden still found time to tweet out that we have to care about human rights in Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba, which really what that tweet means is we need to uh, have economic war against Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba in order to try and turn them into failed states. So I love that Biden, even within this kind of time, California's on fire, I mean, for fuck's sake, and uh, he still found the time, or he, he, he or his people found the time to tweet out, let's crush these other three countries because they have some form of socialism. And yeah, and, and, and wink, wink, hopefully we'll have to go to war. We'll have to send troops or bombs or something down to Venezuela and protect their freedoms and human rights, blah, blah, blah. The guy that helped drop more bombs than Bush uh, as vice president is saying this. And nobody, nobody sees the insanity of it. Nobody sees the hypocrisy of it. They just go, well, let's watch these two trains run into each other again because it made money. Like, it's just unbelievable to me. I, <laughs> Maybe the motto of America should be like, uh, you can watch, but you should probably back up. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm mean, taking a few more steps back. That is what the whole world is doing right now. The whole world's going, <laughs> oh, we should just back up. Let's just get out of the way. Close our borders and just Can- let America just smash into itself. We're going to just let right. this. Canada's now up a few more miles. They've they've pulled back a little. Canada has to be sitting there going, why didn't we build a border wall? Because, like, when America goes up in smoke in the next six months, uh, all these people are just going to be running across this open border on all of these, like, Montana, North Dakota. They're just going to be running across. And what is Canada going to do? I mean, there's going to be 2 million refugees just running across the border in the middle of the night. I mean, that's going to happen because this country did, is going up in smoke. Did you hear that one of the most Googled things during the debate was how to move to Canada? Yes. Yes. I mean, like, I, I, I'm watching, like, financial experts do, like, shows. Like, Robert Kiyosaki did the Rich Dad, Poor Dad he, did, he just had a guy on and he was like, so how do we get out of this country? You know, he's like, he literally, and he's never wanted to do it. He's made plenty of money in this country. He's a big capitalist. He, all these success, rich dad, poor dad books. I mean, he's made hundreds of millions of dollars is my guess. And he's just like, oh, wow. So we should go buy a passport in another country. Like, he's just like, how do we get out? And they had this guy on who has a book called um, The Nomad Capitalist and who just travels and buys property in different countries. And so everyone's just like, yeah, we're, we're so it's done, right? Like, so that guy's kind of like a like a parasite that goes from one nation to another, just slowly buying them up. He's a, and he's eventually, a parasite. Eventually, has sells thirty thousand tickets and two trains run into each other. <laughs> yeah, it's it, America. It, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, do we have before you have a uh, seizure or uh, an aneurysm? Uh, do we have time for one more topic? Do you do you have something? Uh, no, I don't have. I, I, got. I I got one I can put in here in these last uh, ten minutes. All right. Um. Uh, so the gray zone has been covering Ben Norton in the gray zone, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cover this a little more in depth in an upcoming redacted tonight. But um, the so. Uh, hopefully a lot of the viewers know about all of the like propaganda that's been put forward to manufacture our consent for crushing Syria um, in just a multitude of ways. Uh, but what's been leaked recently, which is covered at the gray zone. And I don't, I don't know if there's any other kind of legit outlet that's really covered it uh, in depth, but um, is all this documentation has now leaked from the PR companies, specifically, uh, mainly two of them, uh, ARK and Incostrat. But these two uh, 
you know, multi-million dollar companies, PR companies, uh, largely funded by the UK, but the US is involved as well, that produced the propaganda that were, you know, to manufacture consent for uh, the US crushing Syria or helping to devolve them into uh, civil war. And, you know, it just it, it reveals everything in terms of like, uh, uh, you know, putting they, they control the PR of the White Helmets, uh, this rig- ridiculous. I mean, the White Helmets was created by a former, uh, I believe, MI6 officer in, in Britain. Uh, it was funded by. So so what's kind of outlandish about this is it's like funded by UK taxpayers uh, to pay these PR companies to create. I mean, they were running White Helmets Twitter account and stuff like that. And all of our media, our mainstream media, just bought up this shit, just hook, line, and sinker, never asking questions. Uh, you know, BBC, Al Jazeera, CNN, they all ran these fawning pieces on the White Helmets, which were, you know, supposedly Syrians who were saving people, but really wanted America to help bomb. You know, they would carry a child out and be like, we saved this child, please, America, bomb us. And you're like, oh. Re- really? Is that really what, <laughs> that's what you think will help? And America fell for it very easily. And one of the one of the propaganda arms that they use is Hollywood. And it was one of the uh, Oscar nominated docs that year. No, it won. Yeah, it won. That's right. It won along with like Icarus, another like Russia's bad. It was all these oh, like, yeah. they, and I was like, wow. And so it just like that's and gee, oh, it just mysteriously won. Weird. It just made its way. And you see how just the Hollywood propaganda machine works. So that movie is put in some key film festivals. I forget which one, but they'll put them in like Tribeca, Sundance, something like that. And then they'll win and get all this buzz and they'll make it seem like it's just this organic groundswell, just like Joe Mento, like just nonsense. And then, oh, it wins. And so Americans that aren't paying that much attention, which are most of them because they're too busy watching trains run into each other in a field. Um, you know, Real Housewives, this sports team, that's whatever. Same idea. It's the same idea. They're watching the same thing. And then they go, oh, I, this series bad. All these white helmets, I guess they're the good guys that are saving people from that evil Assad. That's it. That's their, that's all they know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it was the first movie, first Netflix movie to win an Oscar. So it like helped create this like sea change of like, oh, Netflix is now a contender for Oscars. And yeah. so, you know, not only was that garbage, but meanwhile, the U.S. is funding these quote unquote moderate rebels, which do not exist. I mean, if you are, if you are, and it makes sense they don't exist, even if you supported some of this, like, like, People that pick up guns and are daily killing other human beings are not generally moderates. Uh, so, so the moderate rebel thing, it just doesn't make any sense. But they were many of them were connected to al-Nusra and al-Qaeda affiliate. So like we're funding an al-Qaeda offshoot to create war in Syria. And these PR companies are taking in millions of dollars from UK taxpayers to uh, to make sure this is viewed correctly. I mean, they they brag in these leaked documents about having one of them, about having 1,600 journalists that are basically uh, just do what they ask. You know, like we, we email them, cover this story, and they do it. Um, it it's just tremendous. Yeah, and it's like all of it. We we funneled ISIS troops through Turkey into Syria to help with this. Like we just like we we we're suddenly backing ISIS and Al Qaeda. That's how bad Assad was. Like what? It's just unbelievable. And of course, there's no documentary that's going to make it into the Oscars that shows that actually it was all about a pipeline that we wanted to build with with uh, Saudi Arabia and Syria and Iran and Russia had their own pipeline, and that's what this was all about. There's no documentary that's ever, ever going to make it into the Oscars for that. There's, this doesn't, it will never happen. Yeah, uh, I mean, for all the reasons we uh, g- have given for invading, attacking, and otherwise uh, dis- you know, helping to destroy Syria, um, I mean, if you think about the list of reasons you, you know, you have you have the chemical weapons attacks that OPCW whistleblowers have said uh, didn't happen. You you have the the uh, to stop Russia, to stop Iran, to help Israel, uh, to help the the moderate rebels, to you know human rights, uh, to stop Turkey, uh, to help the Kurds, to save the oil. 
Uh, th that's just the ones I can think of off the top of my head, all the reasons we've given for why we have to be in Syria. They're not going to give the real reasons, which are, you know, a combination of that pipeline, geopolitical power in the reason, region, because we don't want anyone like Iran. We don't want anyone uh, having strength and power in that region because it just takes away from ours. And then the fact that they're outside of our central banking system. They have they have nothing to do oh, with our central weird. banks. Yeah, got if you if you stop using the petrodollar, you just painted a bullseye on your forehead. That's exactly what happens. If you say, Oh, we don't want to use your hegemonic currency, bye. Ooh, you're a bad guy all of a sudden. Like Saudi Arabia yeah. can chop up journalists and treat women like dogs, do whatever the hell they want, as long as they buy our weapons and sell us oil, then it's all good. But then Assad is somehow this horrific, you know, not that he's uh, some angel, but why do we back some horrifying right. dictators and not others? It's, it's we, just... we we love we love Bolsonaro and Duterte and you know right. Saudi Arabia and all these fucking horrific leaders. We give seventy we give aid to seventy percent of the world's dictators. But you know Assad was he's not a good guy. Yes, he's bad. He's bad. He's a bad guy. Well, oh dude, that was a good that was a good bonus. Gov seeks. No, um, I, I think so. I think so. It was fantastic. Um, well, Lee, where can people watch and view and celebrate your your Lee Campness? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, yeah, my you can get all my stuff at LeeCamp.com. My TV show, Redacted Tonight. My other podcast, Common Censored. And uh, my Moment of Clarity videos. It's all at LeeCamp.com is the best place to go um and i have a book you can get at leecampbook.com called bullet points and punchlines and uh, a comedy funny. special check it all out yeah the bullet points and punchlines is very funny please please uh check it out folks and also uh if you're listening to this on itunes or spotify or whatever make sure you download it share it give it a positive review hit the like do all those things get the word out on this podcast we've only done i think 11 episodes maybe um and of course, uh, share it out on your social media. You can follow what I'm doing. My name is Graham Elwood. I go to GrahamElwood.com. Uh, I have a YouTube show called Political Vigilante. It's at YouTube.com slash Graham Elwood. And it's also on Rockfin, Blockchain Cryptocurrency. I have Patreon. There's a bunch of great ways to support what I'm doing. A PayPal button. All of that stuff at GrahamElwood.com. Ladies and gentlemen, government secrets. Unnumbered episode, maybe 11. <laughs> episode, <up>. maybe 11. <laughs> maybe 11. <laughs> um, all right, Lee. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining. And thanks, know, man. Good to see you. Thanks for telling us about two trains running into each other. <laughs> thanks for just one story that sums up all of America in one quick story. I think it does. I love that we've had so much chaos in American's history that when I found out about that, I'd never heard of it. <laughs> and right? There's just, there's just been so, it's been such a shit show that it's like setting up a spectacle of two trains running into each other doesn't even make the history books. I know. It just seems like oh those, and it's what sounds like oh that's so crazy what they did back in the 1800s. It's a compared to what today. I mean, are we, is it that nutty? This much later? Yeah. No, yeah. it's not. Um, <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, good to see you, and we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Later, man. Bye.